Hey everybody, I'm Chris Wook, filling in for Joshua Vergara. Do you feel the need for news? I know I do. It's time for Android Authority Weekly. Earlier this week, while everybody else was probably suffering from a case of the Mondays, Mark Zuckerberg flew to South Korea to meet with Samsung. Word on the street is that he's trying to coax them into making a Facebook phone. Here's the thing. Remember when everybody ran out to buy the HTC first? No? Of course not, because that didn't happen. I'm sure Samsung is very well aware of this. HTC might have needed Facebook, but Samsung certainly doesn't. Sorry, Mark. In the beginning, phones were big. Then they got small. Then they got big again. Now the race is on to see who can build the slimmest phone. Enter the Huawei Ascend P6. Now, we've known this one was coming for a while, but as of Tuesday, it's official, and it's looking pretty nice at just over 6 millimeters thick and weighing in at only 120 grams. You've got a quad-core 1.5 gigahertz Huawei processor, 2 gigs of RAM, and a 4.7-inch 720p screen. Not bad. Now, yeah, people are saying it looks a little like an iPhone, and it does, a little, but it's still worth keeping an eye on. Now turning in the complete opposite direction, HTC announced a successor to the HTC Butterfly on Wednesday that actually focuses on battery life instead of being thin enough to cut a cake with. What's it called? The HTC Butterfly S. Okay, so maybe they still need to work on their naming scheme a little bit. But forget that because it looks like the Butterfly S could give the HTC One a run for its money. 5-inch Full HD display, faster processor, blah blah blah, I could go on. Here's what's really cool. It's packing a 3,200 milliamp hour battery, which puts it right up there with the Note 2 battery-wise. Not to mention it's got Sense 5, Boom Sound, the Ultra Pixel Camera, and Blink Feed. Since we first saw how well the Qualcomm Snapdragon 600 performed, we've been waiting to see what the performance on the top of the line Qualcomm Snapdragon 800 would be. Well, preliminary results are in, and just... wow. Qualcomm invited a few folks to take a look at the new system on chip, and many a benchmark was run. Long story short, the Snapdragon 800 beat pretty much everything that was thrown at it, except for the Tegra 4, which held its own in certain tests. The chipset will be showing up in some pretty big deal devices later this year, so luckily it's not going to be too long until we see it. Have you ever wanted to take everything you love about technology, throw it in a bucket, and end up with one big awesome thing? Well, that's basically what the Samsung Active Q is. Samsung took the ropes off of this monster at its premiere event in London. It runs Windows 8, but it also runs Android 4.2. We're not talking about dual booting, either. Android 4.2 runs in a virtual machine, allowing you to switch between Windows and Android whenever you want at the tap of a button. It's a tablet, but we're talking an Intel Haswell chip, 3200 by 1800 pixel resolution, a QWERTY keyboard, and an S Pen, because why not, right? Now, what's it going to cost? Now, how could Samsung top that news? Well, they couldn't really, but they did announce the Galaxy Camera NX. If you looked at the Galaxy S4 Zoom and thought, I want less phone and more camera, you're in luck. The Android-powered Galaxy NX will have a 4.8-inch touchscreen, 1.6 GHz quad-core processor, 2 gigs of RAM, and 16 gigs of internal memory, along with better camera-specific features in general. But here's what makes it very cool. It's an interchangeable lens camera, so more serious photographers will be able to choose the lens depending on the results they want. All those features and flexibility do come with a price, though. Literally, The Verge estimates that the Galaxy NX will cost close to $1,000 with a kit lens. Don't buy one for your kids, is what they're saying. Around the launch of the HTC One, there were a lot of rumors saying that HTC CEO Peter Chow said that he would resign from the company if the HTC One didn't turn the company around. It didn't. And he didn't. According to him, he never said that. Now, a lot of executives are leaving the company, but Chow says, and I quote, I'm not going to find another job. He told HTC shareholders that the company's ultimate goal is to get back to the 10% market share it once had and hopefully go even higher. A lot of us here at Android Authority think that one of the biggest problems with HTC has been lack of marketing. Apparently, the company agrees as they're preparing a $12 million marketing deal featuring Iron Man himself, Robert Downey Jr. Insert movie reference here. And that's it for this week, folks. We'd love to hear what you think down in the comments. You can find a written companion to this video at androidauthority.com. The link is in the description.
Josh will be back next week, same time, same place, and I will be back to my usual gig hosting Android Authority Q&A, where we answer your questions every Wednesday. I'm Chris Wook for Android Authority, and as always, thanks for watching.